so I traced the Telecaster template and then I made some changes to it. Uh, so now it looks like a completely new guitar. Uh, I've seen some other custom Telecasters kind of like this one, but uh, regardless, I think it'll make a good looking guitar. This is the piece of wood I'm going to be working with. It's a two inch thick piece of quilted maple. It has some really cool figure on the top and bottom of it, but more importantly, it has this awesome live edge on both sides. So what I'm going to do is cut this thing in half and then I'm going to turn the sides 180 degrees so that the live edges are facing each other, which will then create the ripper bed. So with the guitar shape that I have, uh, it's going to allow me to use the maximum amount of this piece of wood. So you can kind of see by how it's laid out here. Uh, I've just been testing on this piece of scrap. On the left, I shaved off the bark and I kind of like the way that bark looks on it, but I think it's probably in my best interest to get most of it removed uh, to improve the strength of the bond once the epoxy goes in there. What I'm doing here is just sealing the wood with epoxy resin so that I don't get any air bubbles leaking out of it when I add the rest of the epoxy. Little tip here, if you're working with epoxy resin and you don't have a pressure chamber to get the air bubbles out of your resin, uh, use a little tub of hot water and let both parts of your resin sit in it for like five minutes before you mix it. Uh, it'll make it a whole lot easier to mix and less air will get trapped in it. I'm just going to add a little bit of blue mica powder and a little bit more. So my idea here is since I have this awesome live edge, uh, I'm just going to fill up maybe a quarter inch here at the bottom with this blue resin. Uh, and then I'm going to fill up the rest of it with clear resin and it will hopefully look like a little river canyon, if that makes sense. Alright, so this is kind of special epoxy resin that I'm going to use. Uh, and I've done a lot of testing with it before this point, but it has a low viscosity and an extended gel time so that it minimizes exotherm, which is really important when pouring this much epoxy at once. And I'll try to show what I mean by that after I pour it. Same thing here, gonna drop this in hot water for a few minutes before I mix it. All right, it's all in. Uh, it was a little bit nerve wracking, but everything seems to be holding up okay. Uh, and I don't see any leaks, so it looks like that plumber, uh, that plumber's putty is doing a pretty good job sealing the edges up. Oh, and I did this inside the house just because it's warmer in here, the resin should cure faster. So if you see here, we're looking at around 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so the reason I'm able to pour two inches of this resin all at once is because of the extended gel time. Uh, if I were to just use normal epoxy resin in this case, uh, it would probably be somewhere in the 250 plus degrees uh, temperature range. With epoxy resin, the more mass you pour, the more exotherms or heats up. So it's pretty critical to know the features of your epoxy resin and use it for the right applications. This is an oscillating belt sander and it also has these spindle attachments so that I can get in the tighter areas in the body. Uh, but if you've watched some of my previous videos, when I would cam strap a belt sander onto a table and use that to sand the edges of my guitar, it's basically the same principle. Uh, just this is a little sturdier and it's going to guarantee a 90 degree edge and I can use a spindle attachment so there's a little more versatility with this. Thank you. 
so at this point in my other guitar builds, I would take it to the router table and clean up the edges. For this guitar, I'm not going to do that. I, I think the shape is already pretty good, but also when using a template bit on the edges, you can get something called tear out, which kind of tears a chunk out of wood out of the side of the edge, depending on the direction of the grain. And at this point in the build, I'm already so deep into this thing that I don't think it's worth risking it for something that I don't think is totally necessary. This is a piece of scrap wood that was left over after I cut out the guitar body. Uh, but what I'm going to do is resaw it on the bandsaw. And that's basically just running it through the bandsaw horizontally so that I can cut off about a quarter inch. So now I can use this piece of wood to make a control cavity cover for the back of the guitar. So I drew out my control cavity cover how I want it to look. Now I'm going to take it and throw it on some MDF and make some templates out of it. Uh, I'm going to do this for the pickup and neck pockets on the front of the guitar as well. And then I'll drill out the bulk of the material uh, before using the template and the router to clean up the pockets. I want to give this guitar some curves and make it really stand out. Uh, the first one I'm going to do is this belly cutout on the back and then I'll flip it over and I'm going to do some kind of bevel around the edges on the top. want to mention something real quick so I've done two colored pencil guitars to this point the Stratocaster and the Telecaster and I will make more colored pencil guitars at some point in the future but I think it'd get a little bit boring for you guys as the viewers to watch me build guitars out of colored pencils over and over and for me building them as well uh, and on that note I've been getting a lot of requests to build Les Pauls, Flying V's or other guitars and I will get to those at some point I've just kind of got a list of ideas and I'm checking them off one by one and I don't want to limit this channel strictly to colored pencil guitars, so it's kind of the deal. Alright, so I've just spent the past few days doing a bunch of boring work on the guitar. Uh, lots of sanding, cleaning up the pockets, drilling out the string pearl holes. Uh, I'm really happy about the way the die came out, it really makes the figure on the wood pop. But now it's ready to get a clear coat, so I'm going to use a two-part catalyzed lacquer and a ton of coats that, that I'll do over the next few days. I really am happy with how this guitar turned out. I wasn't sure how it was going to look when I poured the epoxy in, but after shaping it and sanding it and dyeing the wood, it looks a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, the, the quilted maple that I used is awesome. It was my first time working with figured maple uh, or figured wood in general, so it was a learning experience for me in terms of dyeing the wood and sanding it back to get it where I wanted. But after putting the clear coat on and polishing it, it has an awesome 3D-like effect to it. And I'll try to show it here, but the grain looks totally different from one angle to the next, which is really cool. The river turned out really well too. I like the blue resin on the bottom and the clear resin the rest of the way. Uh, it kind of resembles a little river canyon like I mentioned earlier in the video. 
There is a few tiny uh, little air bubbles along the wood, but nothing really noticeable unless you're really searching for them. The neck is a Warmworth Custom Telecaster style neck that I bought used, but it's in really good condition. When I planned this guitar out, I only wanted one pickup because I wanted to show as much of the river as I could. Uh, I knew that would come out at a cost in terms of the sound of the guitar because only having one pick up the bridge, it was, I was expecting it to have sort of a twangy sound to it. Um, but I gotta say, I'm really impressed by how it sounds. It's a Duncan Stag Mag pickup on the bridge, uh, but the guitar has way more range than I thought it would. And I'll, I'll try to show that here in the demo in a second. So I usually get asked this in the comment section, um, but here it is. Looks like just under 10 pounds. So still heavy, but considerably less than the E-Color Pencil guitars. Real quick, if you want to stay up to date with what I'm working on, uh, give me a follow on Instagram at BrillsArt. I'll also post other videos there of me playing the guitars that I make. So that's full toned down, and I mean, I mean it's not exactly like a neck pickup, but it sounds a lot better than I was expecting it to. You can compare it to the Telecaster, and it's the same setting, so bridge pickup and tone down. Definitely more range on the Telecaster, but I'm happy with how this guitar sounds, being that it only has a bridge humbucker.